The CDC has released new guidance recommending that fully vaccinated students, teachers and staff don't have to wear masks during the upcoming school year. Meanwhile, Pfizer says it's working on a third dose of its vaccine. The company says the booster shot could give extra protection against the highly contagious Delta variant, but the FDA and CDC aren't giving the green light to that third dose just yet. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest. This morning, Pfizer at odds with America's top health agencies over COVID booster shots. The pharmaceutical company announcing Thursday it's planning to ask the FDA for authorization to offer a third dose six to 12 months after the second to take on the Delta variant. The booster that Pfizer is developing appears to raise neutralizing antibodies and it increases it by about five or 10 times the original vaccine series. But within hours, the CDC and FDA releasing a joint statement undercutting that announcement, saying Americans who have been fully vaccinated do not need a booster shot at this time. However, the CDC is warning the Delta variant is already taking hold, spreading faster than expected through under-vaccinated areas. Although we expected the Delta variant to become the dominant strain in the United States, this rapid rise is troubling. In the past two weeks, 10 states have seen COVID hospitals admissions jump more than 20 percent and all 10 of them have vaccination rates below the national average that includes missouri the site of the nation's most aggressive delta variant outbreak while crowds still pack the lake of the ozarks for the fourth of july nearby lake regional hospital issuing an urgent plea noting six covid patients have already died in their hospital since july 1st compared to six covid patients in all of june and just one in may the ceo writing things are bad and they are about to get worse to be completely blunt we need you to get vaccinated now and Diane, beyond a booster shot, Pfizer's also announced plans to develop a new vaccine altogether for people who haven't gotten any shot so far. It'll be built specifically to combat the Delta variant and clinical trials could start as early as next month, though experts again stress our current vaccines are effective against the Delta variant or any other version of COVID we've seen so far. Diane. All right, Trevor Alt, thank you. And let's go to ABC News contributor and Boston Children's Hospital Chief Innovation Officer, Dr. John Brownstein, for more on all this. Dr. Brownstein, thanks for being here. I want to start with that new recommendation from the CDC saying fully vaccinated students, teachers, and other staff don't have to wear masks in school next year. How big is that? And what does that mean for the under 12 crowd that can't be vaccinated yet? Yeah, good morning, Diane. I mean, this is big news because this is CDC continuing to follow the science like we've done for adults to understand that if you're fully vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask. And so, you know, the CDC is trying to push for guidance that allows kids to get back into classrooms safely and a return to normal. And especially following the science, we know that we've had now vaccinations among the 12 to 15 group. Um, and so with that, we can start to bring kids back in the classroom without wearing masks. Now, that doesn't mean for those that are under 12, they're going to have to continue wearing masks. And overall, we're going to still see this layered protection, you know, social distancing and other mitigation efforts to keep transmission down, especially in communities where you have active transmission. Now, we have to remember CDC is not a regulatory agency. It's giving recommendations, and then public health and school districts are going to have to take those recommendations. In some ways, it does open up somewhat of a can of worms. Like, how do we know who's vaccinated, who's not? You know, will teachers, you know, be forced into situations where if they're immunocompromised into classrooms where they don't know if kids are vaccinated or not? So a lot of questions about how you create proof. Are, are parents going to have to force, um, be forced to provide that proof of vaccination? So a ton of questions going into these recommendations that I, unfortunately at the local level, they're going to have to figure out. Um, but at the same time, I think the rules are going to be really dependent on active transmission in the community. If you have these increases of cases because of the Delta variant, then of course you're going to have to have more mitigation strategies in our schools. Now, I spoke to the education secretary yesterday and he said he expects to see all schools open nationwide five days a week this fall for in-person classes. Can parents count on that, do you think? And how should we be preparing for the school year? 
You know, I think parents can count on that. I mean, I think obviously it happens at the local level. We should have that expectation that all schools are open. We know how to protect our vulnerable and our adults against the severe consequences of this virus. We know how to limit transmission indoors through masking, social distancing for those who are unvaccinated. We have all the tools. We have the knowledge now. Of course, a year ago, there was a lot of open questions, but now we have these incredible vaccines that we know protect against severe illness. We know that they limit transmission. We know that they also work against Delta, the Delta variant. So our expectation is school should be open five days a week. Yes, there'll be slightly different mitigation strategies depending on the school, depending on, on what's happening in the community, but we should all expect that for our kids right now. And uh, Pfizer is also now set to seek approval for this third vaccine dose, but U.S. health officials say that's not necessary yet. So what do you think? Where's the disconnect here? Yeah, I mean, this is an unfortunate one. It's created a lot of confusion, unfortunately. Potentially a little fear among people who think now, okay, a booster shot's gonna be needed. Now, the data that you know Pfizer showed is, yes, you can get an antibody response that is improved six months after if you get that booster of that same dose. But the, really, the data has not shown in the real world that that's needed. You know, the two shots of Pfizer are working really well against the, the Delta variant. There's no indication that the date that there should be any change into the policy. I think that clearly we know that, you know, these vaccines are really working against what counts, severe disease and deaths, even with the Delta variant. And the focus really has to be on the unvaccinated people, who are the people who have not even had a one shot. Those are the ones that are you know, passing this virus around that are at risk uh, from severe consequences that potentially can allow for mutations and more variants. And I think there's a global equity consideration here. How can we be considering you know, boosters in the US when many healthcare workers across this globe have yet to have been even one shot? Again, I think that really has to be the push right now ahead of really setting any policy around boosters. All right, Dr. John Brownstein, always great to have you. Thank you. Thanks, Darren. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.